coast obviously looks pretty similar in some places. And you can see there the cliffs all look quite similar. And what I've done yesterday, I planed conveniently, I don't know if you can just see up there, a luminous green bottle, just zoom right in on that. And I've just put that in the cliff with a wooden peg there as well, just to show me when I walked along whereabouts the long line was. So it's right out in front of there. I've just got to wait now. It's about 11 o'clock. Tide, low tide's about half past 12, so hopefully in about half an hour it'll just be out enough for me to find the start of the long line. Fingers crossed there'll be some fish on it. So the tide's finally gone out now. Um, we're down on the reef. I'll just show you where I've set the long line. So there's a pile of stones. I've just anchored. I've just tied the end of the line round that stone. I've just put another one to keep the line down onto the ground. And there's the line there. You can just see. It's just a piece of the length of braided line. It's a little bit thinner than paracord. And then to it, at intervals, at roughly a metre, I've attached these lengths of line here. Uh, they're approximately 45 centimetres. 50 centimetres and then to the end of that using a full blood knot I've got some 4 row hooks and that length of line there is just attached to the main line with a swivel and you just thread the main line through in the loop through one end of the swivel over itself and that secures it and we can see there that the but Lemp's managed to get itself not around the main line so we'll have to undo that before we rebait it. And that just runs all the way down. And there you go. There's seven on there. Just go along the line. So we find the next one. There we go. Just need to check these hooks are sharp before we rebait them. Managed to dig itself in. Still on nice and sharp though. Let me just go right along the line. And that's just attached to the rocks down there. The same I attached it at the other end. So I'm going to rebait all these lines now using some cuttlefish. We didn't get anything on them this time, and then we're going to leave them out through the tide again and come back tomorrow lunchtime. I just want to show you how I bait up the hooks. So there's a trace. Just lay it on an angle away. The tide comes in this way on an angle, so it'll push it up away from it, so it's not going to push it over the line and tangle it up through around the line. And then the bait's on the end there. Just took through a real tough bit. Great big lump of cuttlefish there. Huge lump of cuttlefish. Try and put the dogfish off and hopefully get a big mouth bass. So we're just going to lay the put a bit of bait over it so it doesn't tangle and then just to keep the seagulls off of it until the tide comes back and we're just going to disguise the bait making sure it's not wrapped around the line and there we go just disguise the bait like that just by putting a bit of broken off loose seaweed over the top of it and that'll just keep the seagulls off of it the tide's right out now just in amongst the rocks here you can just probably make out there's my little marker up on the cliff, I don't know if you can see that there but I've got my little marker, my bottle up there anyway on the cliff just to show me where to come when I come back tomorrow, it all looks the same when you come back one reef looks like another bit of reef to the untrained eye and I don't come here that often and it's always changing anyway so there we go the baited up hook laid off on an angle run the same way as the tide there and then big lump of bait on the end of the hook and just disguise it with a loose pile of seaweed stop any birds diving on it hopefully so there we go there's a short video on long lining hopefully that was uh, explained well enough and you get the general idea it's just a length of line, any any line would do. If you just had fishing line you could use that, I just use braided line, a bit thinner than paracord, uh, just because it's a bit stronger. And to that I've got my hook lengths. The hook lengths are 80 pound mono, so it's quite thick. 
if you use really thin line it's just going to spin and tangle so use a really sort of heavy thick snud or hook length and um, that just wants to be about 40 centimeters so again it can't tangle up um, different size hooks you can use size 1-0 um, down to twos and fours for splatfish I'm hopefully going to get some cod or bass that are going to come cheekily in over the reef here inshore so I'm using some 4 hooks I could even go up to 6 so I should probably even have a couple of bigger ones on there with some big lumps of bait the big fish have big mouths um, try and dispersuade or keep the other fish off like dogfish but that's why we're using big lumps of bait so I hope you enjoyed that I'm going to come back tomorrow and we'll finish off the video and see if we caught anything and if our luck's changed. Cheers, bye. So it's the second day, back down on the beach to come and get the long lines in. Um, you can probably see the weather's turning a little bit at the moment. I've checked the forecast, um, it's just starting to spit at the moment, so I have to keep my hands over the camera lens. Um, so I'm going to bring the long line in today, but it's a uh, Good news, I'm really glad I was patient and left it out for the second day running. Um, my first intention of trying not to catch any dogfish and having the baits really big to catch the bass hasn't really worked, but we've got food, so I'll just show you what we've caught now. We'll just start off now from our pile of stones, our anchor stones, and this is the seaward side, it's going out to sea. Okay, and it's running straight back in as I said yesterday. I'll just follow down there we go, there's the first fish, dogfish, still alive, tide's only just gone out. Um, you need to be careful when you handle these, they'll try and wrap themselves wrap themselves around you and this skin here it's like really smooth if you rub it this way but you can't rub your finger up towards its head from its back and what that'll do is that'll uh, scrape your skin off and excrete a kind of ammonia a substance in there that inhibits clotting and makes you bleed and that's probably what they do to attack their prey. So there's the first one, nicely hooked through the mouth. I'll take these off in a minute and dispatch those. Working our way down the line, that's hook number one. Hook number two, second dogfish. Uh, nice size, good size. Again, this one, just watch those teeth in there hooked quite deep inside the mouth so you see what he's trying to do as I hold him by his head he'll try and get his tail reined his tail reined my arm and he's quite he's still really alive there's loads of energy in there so just pick him up by the head and I'll show you I'll try and show him in the spot so that's hook number one fish on number two there's a fish on and this one's still really lively is hook number two number three sorry and we've got another dog fish on there again so they're all slightly different colours so that's three hooks three fish okay I have to keep the camera covered uh, and that's pretty much it basically, so three out of seven, nothing else down on the end of the line. Three out of seven, that's not a bad ratio. That's almost a 50% strike rate. And there we go. Just to show prove that they're not when the same fish are shown in as number one, number two. And this line down there is not so lively. There's number three. That's three dogfish, seven hooks. I was using cuttlefish that I had in the freezer from the summer, but we could have easily tried the limpets that are down. There's not much food here at the moment. It's, uh, as I say, second week in January. It's not actually that cold, but it's the middle of winter. There's no prawns here, or very little. I can't find any evidence of any shrimps or prawns. Very few fish, very, very few fish are going to be coming in here to feed because there's not a lot of food. So. Uh, the fish, like the dogfish, obviously, but they're really powerful mates, able to crush, damage small shellfish, and the scavengers all the same. So they've been in there overnight, um, possibly even this morning. They keep alive for a long time. Anyway, it's starting to rain really heavily now. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you soon.